Hello, hello, hello. Happy second week of Avandia's birthday month. Um, technically, this will be posted on the third week. But if you don't follow us on our social media, then you have not been eating the results of our anniversary, which is a couple of discounts on all our products. Um, so go ahead and follow us. My name is Lisa Kenya Mozi Raboni, and this is Conversations with Kenya Mozi. For the month of July, we are focusing on uh, Obonire and celebrating it through a couple of business lessons I've been, I've had the opportunity to learn as an individual who runs a business. Um, excuse me. The first one was on, a, was on general lessons I have learned running a business. And this one is on finances. Now, let me tell you. <laughs> Grab a cup. So when I got into business, I was very, very heavy on, I don't know math like that. I just don't know numbers. I'm not, I'm not good with numbers and I don't know math, <laughs> basically. Like I'm the creative, I'm all these other things, not the math, not the math. This is not even a lesson. This is an important tip, an important note. Whether you like math or not, whether you can add or subtract or not, if you get into the business of business, you are going to just, you're going to have to become an auditor, an accountant, like little by little. I'm seeing three years. The things that make sense to me now that a year in, six months in, I was just like, I don't want to be bothered. <laughs> but right now I am the most bothered because finances are what keep and run a business. If you don't have your finances in check, then you are just playing games. If you are not making money, you're just wasting your time. You're wasting a good time. You're wasting efforts. If you are not able to keep your business afloat and the only way you can is by having money in the account. That's the only way. Then just close let's pack up let's pack up and just choose to name whatever you're doing something else so here are a couple of lessons um number one is bookkeeping when i got into business uh my friend mumbe carol who's you know very clever um she like earlier on i didn't understand it at the time i was a 20 year old just figuring just happy that we're making still and now i can go and buy ice cream um she told me bookkeeping, like even the 200 shillings that you pay for SMSs, even the, you know, 500 shillings that you're going to put um calls for the day on, even the, like whatever it is, as long as you're spending money from the business, going into the business, put it down. I didn't understand it because I was like, no, 500 shillings, like why would you record it? But 500 shillings every day for seven days is a certain amount that it matters to your business right so records 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 um records also help you know if you're making money if you're not making money where are you lagging where are you not um for a product-based business such as mine record keeping has really just helped me determine like in this season this makes sense for us to spend on this doesn't we can hold production of this um it's not coming in we can rethink this reevaluate this business decision is it making sense um is this profitable to us is, is this beneficial in the short term and the long term is this something that we can hold on for is this something that we need to like do express expenditure on so record keeping really really sets the pace of how money is flowing in and out of your business and it's so important just to look at it also you see which seasons something that record keeping has also helped me as a business owner is seeing which seasons we are making the most money in and how to capitalize on that like there are seasons within your business where it's just <laughs> like let me tell you january i think it's so rough for all business owners that january match period as people are getting back into you know getting back into the accounts like your 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 business is just like where where like your business is at risk it's at cost at risk so if you don't have reserves to keep keep the cycle going in that season uh, my dear it might be your last few months whereas like summer or in the middle of the year and like at the end of the year that's when you have to get creative i'm talking about offers i'm talking about sales I'm like because people are just ready to spend they have a lot of excess money they have a lot of events to go to and if you're able to market that you are the person to buy from um that's that's fantastic so your books also your books are able to determine that well mine have been able to determine that number two accountability one thing about business owners, we think it's our money. 
We think it's our money. Like, yes, we worked for it, but it's not your money. The money belongs to Obwani. It doesn't belong to Lisa. It doesn't belong to Kenya Mozi. Neither does it belong to Rabwani. It is not your money. It is Obwani's money. So, um, what I have learned is, especially now that I have a store manager, like, any, if I take a loan out of the business, if I take, okay, like, that's the money that's really close to me and I have an emergency, even if I take 10K, I'm like, I have Obwani's 10K, remind me. At the end of the month, it's like, madam. Your salary has come. <laughs> you have a Wendy's 10k. You have a Wendy's 30k. So the finances are no longer bent on me because I'm the business owner. So you know what? The employee doesn't have like I say no. She literally has like I, we have you here in the records. You have a hundred k that I've paid. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what, like pay up because that money is needed to go back into the business. Number three, this is tying to accountability if you keep thinking that business money is yours you're not going to think to pay yourself but if you've paid yourself if you say you know what this is the capacity of the business this is how much i can pay myself at the end of the month it's much better than taking 300k that you can't account for like that's money for suppliers that's money for um that's money for the business and you're taking it because you're the owner but if you say my salary is 200k net like I'm not going to touch any other business money. If it's money that I'm going to touch, it's a loan and even put interest systems, whatever it is. If you say 200k is the money that I pay for myself from my business, finished and clear. You know, every single month you have to make enough money to be able to pay yourself 200k and then don't touch the business money because the rest of it is not yours. It's for the business growth. It's for the business um, stability. It's for the employees, it's for suppliers, whatever it's for pay yourself first um three separate finances now not even you using the business money a lot of the times because when it is my business i am going to use my personal money to run open needed errands and i'm just like i'll write it off mentally <laughs> i'll pay myself or whatever separating finances like actually having like records and saying okay i paid this for my money in that moment because that's where i had cash from being able to pay myself back and be like okay this is a business expense but also even with like accounts like my personal account is so different from the open needed account every single business i start it has to have its own account there's no way we are mixing cash there's no way there's no way there's no way and honestly that's the smartest thing to do because (laughs) hey the branches in Kampala there are many there are many learning to begin and negotiate when I got into business I think I didn't understand the economics of things so I'm just like oh I remember (laughs) I can't even put the context um so the first person that we used to buy material from used to charge us 5k higher than the person who um we buy material from now now at that time i just didn't think through the math i'm just like you know what if it if we spend on this and then we make this it's okay being a business owner for three years has taught me baby negotiate look for the best deal always like always have like even if it seems that other other person is friendlier or whatever the best deal you're running a business you're not running a friendship you're not running a relationship the best deal ever like if you can get the good quality that you want and just look for the best deal what's the best deal what's the best deal here (laughs) like constantly negotiating um yes maintaining quality yes maintaining you know respecting people and all of those things but just rem- and giving them the value for their money because you know ain't no great to, it's not good to be a capitalistic person but business is part of the captain <laughs> it's part of cap- capitalism honestly anyway so um always bargaining and negotiating and always lo- looking out for a better deal like how can i make more money off of this sale like off of this product that's that's a question that i'm constantly asking myself um and then the sixth lesson the business has told me is planning planning for money before i'd be like okay let's do this let's do this let's like i'll just be off the whim and it has also been translated into my personal life like before i was just an off whim spender like if I wanted to buy new, if I wanted to like put in a new product, you know, we need it like a year in. I'm just, the money is there, just go. <laughs> now it's like, okay, in a month, we, go, we might need to do this. So what's the price? Let's budget for it. Let's think about it. Like I will just be going through fabric um shops and just listing down the prices of things that I think I might need in six months, three months from now. How can I budget for it? How can I put money aside for it? Planning for the business money is like okay so we're gonna start paying rent 
this and this much is expected of us okay can we make sure that the next two months we've been able to cover like six months of rent so that we ensure that at least at the end of the year we will still have a physical outlet okay we've got um an employee this is how much she's gonna be paid like work through the logistics of making sure that that pay is accounted for period um before if there was like a shout out to buy you if there's a to buy you market day like i could decide two weeks to that oh let's go <laughs> no it's like okay we're going in january why because we speak this and this so we're able to make sales we're going in july because of this we're going in december because of, like now i'm just like does this make financials this the business if it doesn't we are not part um and then finally building supplier relationships if you're a business owner this is the way for what <laughs> because there are seasons where your business won't be making money there are seasons where you won't be breaking even there are seasons where you will be struggling and you have to like <sighs> negotiate your way through it for example my jewelry supplier those guys they trust me that <laughs> i can go three months three months i've not cleared that date i've just been putting deposits and i still have jewelry i can still make an order because they know ash it's just gonna pay regardless because we've had a relationship over the past three years the guy who gives me say ankara fabrics even him he knows like i there's the time when i was not in town and i wasn't able to process payments and i like, literally had a week to be back in town he's like no no don't worry like me i know you're going to pay me regardless so don't worry you take the fabric we shall sort ourselves when you're ready um <clears throat> so yeah so being able to build relationships that work for your business because your business has to run regardless <laughs> so make those financial decisions the times when i say hey, this, this is a bad banja i'm going to banja is dead this is a bad debt i'm going to service one. i know i can hold this one on for two two more weeks this is a lesson my dad taught me, but I never thought about it because I'm just always like, I, I run business like my mom <laughs> for, a, for a long time, but I'm now becoming like my dad um, in a couple of ways, not all of them. But my mom is the type of business owner who is like, I'm going to clear every minute if my bank is left on zero. My dad is like, hmm, this one is pressing, this one is not, this one is pressing, this one is not. And that's honestly what uh, building relationships is for. By the way, don't like, don't over delay don't take people for granted obviously but it's just be smart about what you need to spend on and what can carry your business from now till next next month yeah and those are seven financial lessons i have learned as a business owner i hope they help you in your business as you start as you think through ah the final one it's eight <laughs> guys go and do business classes do business classes business training learn about a business like trust me you need this you 101 percent need it i came into business thinking i don't i did two time baking to better classes that that airlifted me to, to the place that i'm at right now in regards to business and thinking about it so go ahead and study business it's either look for online co- classes um go to youtube university of youtube get mentorship from people who are running businesses um let no one tell you there's no smooth thread it's not smooth thread especially when it comes to business finances be ready to struggle and suffer but you make it out of life that's all i have to tell you thank you for listening to conversations with Kenya Mozi. please go ahead and follow us um at conversations with Kenya Mozi on instagram we are opening a twitter page excited um you can also follow me personally at kayumazi roboni on um instagram twitter and snapchat bye bye